brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Jade Washaw, number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Ryan's in Seattle. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Hi, long-time listener. Uh, I just got a uh, an offer from my parents. They helped me buy a house. I'd enter into a, a contract with them where basically they would be the bank. They would fund the entirety of the the purchase price, and I'd pay them back, including interest. They gave me a little bit better of a deal with the interest um, at about 6.5% instead of um, it's around seven, seven and a half around where I'm at. Um, and I was just curious on if it was going to be, uh, something I should do. I know we've talked about, or you've talked about, uh, not buying a home, uh, with somebody you're not married to, but it's, it is family kind of thing. So, um, the difference in interest, what does that amount to? I'm going somewhere with this. Um, cause that's the break you're getting, right? That's what they're offering you as a break on break on interest. That as well as they'd be purchasing 25% of the home and I'd pay off 75% of the home. And then when I sell it, they get their, <laughs> it, so the purchase price is 400 grand. Yeah. Um, they, they would be given back their hundred thousand and then 25% of any profit that was made. So this gets very complex. Yes. <laughs> um, have you already done this? Um, it, it's in the process of getting done right now. Okay. Can, um, can, can you and are you willing to stop it? I, I think it's a great idea. It's not a great idea. It sure. sucks beyond belief. It's a horrible idea. It's going to end in ashes. Please don't yeah. do it. Please don't do this. Let me, you, you, how old are you? Uh, 27. Okay. Just 10. When you're 30 and you're married and you want to refinance the house and you have to buy out the 25%, your wife is going to be so pissed at your parents. Mm -hmm. Don't is, is that do this. The, the value would be going up. Or? Don't do this. You can't afford to buy a house, sounds like. Mm -hmm. If you can I, afford to buy a house, go buy you a house, son. Do not do this. You, you guys are putting this all together like there's only one thing that can happen, and it's everything works out perfect. And 100% of the time, everything does not work out perfect. Everything True. that comes at this, if you want to refinance, you want to sell, they don't want to sell, you are now in partnership with people. For no apparent reason, except a half a percent. No, 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 no. And to go back to the first thing, it sounded like at first your parents were just trying to offer you, and, not, and it's, it wasn't a good method, but it sounded like they were trying to offer you a break in interest. And my thought would have been like, oh, calculate how much it is and just ask for it as a gift. And then you go buy the house. But they're really trying to make a profit. And so it's two things going on. It's you trying to get a house before you can afford it and them trying to invest in real estate. And they don't really have the money to do that either. So it's two things that are gone awry. This and, is really bad, Ryan. I yeah. really wish I could talk you into not doing it. I don't think I can, hey. though. I think you're too far into it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, you're done. Okay. Good luck, son. Please don't do it. I'm going to tell you one more time. There's 47 ways this can go wrong and only one way it can go right. And you're going to experience one of the 47. I'm, you called and asked our opinion. I've got 30 years on this microphone, 40 years of doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have never seen a deal like this work out. They always go sideways. You're, you're asking to have a strain in a relationship with your parents over a stupid house. Mm -hmm. And you guys have these rainbows and unicorns and skittles in your head that this is all going to work out a certain way and honey it's not 
So you're going to do it anyway, and you're going to learn the lesson the hard way. But you can remember the time you called and we told you not to do it. When you're sitting neck deep in the poop, you just remember that Dave and Jade told you not to do it. <laughs> yeah, because he's going to be neck deep oh, he's going in the poop. Yeah. Katie's in Pensacola. Hi, Katie. What's up? Hi, Dave and Jade. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can um, I help? So I just want to ask, what type of savings account should we keep the $110,000 that we have for a down payment on a home in the future? My husband is eligible to retire from the Air Force in three years, but will probably wait another two years, so five years total, to maybe buy a home. Yeah. Okay. Wow, nice. Well, if you're going to play close to a five-year window, you can talk about putting some or all of it towards something like a, a, a standard and poor, an S&P 500 mutual fund, and you'll make some really good okay. money on it. That's what I do, okay? But it could go down in value. You know, you could put 110 in, it might be worth 100, but that would be a highly unusual five-year. 97% of the five-year periods in the stock market's history have made money. So I'm very okay. comfortable with the risk if you put okay. it in and leave it alone five years. If you're going to leave it alone three years, probably not. I'm probably going to go high yield. If you want to do a blend, I'd do some in the like half of it in a mutual fund and an S and P 500 fund, and half of it in a high yield. But at least get some of this money working for you, because we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the difference of about ten thousand dollars a year, and what you would earn okay. on the money. So we're talking about fifty thousand okay. bucks of versus a high yield versus a uh, a mutual fund o like over a five year period of time. I also like the idea of investing it or doing the blend because once you've put it, you know, you put it in an index fund or you put it where you put it, it, you're less likely to touch it. You're less likely to have something pop up like your friend's, you know, wedding in the Caribbean that you think would be a good idea to spend some of that money on, right? Whereas if it's in a mm -hmm. high yield, it's easy to grab some of it. You invest it. Yeah, it's high yields are away. a little too accessible. Yeah. Yeah. I like trying to keep it out of my own reach. I like to trick myself into becoming wealthy. Yeah, that's you know, that's and good. trick myself into actually accomplishing my goals. And yeah, that's a good point. You man. know, it's a very good point. Yeah, you know, so it's always that, a wedding in the Caribbean. Yeah, I don't know why. What is it with you and the wedding in the know. Caribbean? That comes up a lot. <laughs> is this a scar in your life? But, it man, might be. <laughs> there might be a friend out there somewhere that's. But you know how it is now. Suddenly, you need a new car. Oh yeah. Well, you, you need you know, for, quote, for rednecks, need. it's we need a bass boat. Oh. Need a bass boat. <laughs> I, need, I need a side by side to go deer hunting in. Oh gosh! You know, and and they're only they're only twenty grand. I mean, you got you know, that sitting for in the high toy, yield. You know, it's all yeah. And got that money sitting over there. <laughs> why would why would we why would we pay a bank interest for the yeah. side by side? No, I mean, yeah, that you, your brain starts it fogging does. up and it stops stops working. You can't see through the windshield anymore. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. That's that's a very good point. So I I personally, I'm comfortable, knowledge wise, with the history of the stock market. So I'm plunking all of it, if it's me, into an S&P 500, if you got a four- or five-year window. If you're a little less comfortable, do some there and some otherwise. If you're completely that freaks you out, just put it in a high yield. Yeah. But you've got the downside of it's too accessible. You know, it becomes a bass boat fund, or I need to redecorate the kitchen fund, or yeah. whatever the crap comes up. This is The Ramsey Show. Going cruising, boys and girls. We'd love to have you go with us. We're doing the Ramsey Live Like No One Else cruise. For those of you that are baby steps four and beyond, it's your opportunity to celebrate the milestone of getting into wealth building mode. All the Ramsey personalities, including Jade and uh, I and my wife Sharon, will be with us the entire seven days on a high end, very nice Holland America, almost brand new ship. We're going to Turks and Caicos, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas. And uh, man, this thing is packed full. We've got lots of 
fun, cool friends coming, like Stephen Curtis Chapman's going to hang out with us. Manit Shohan from the Food Channel will be with us. Uh, we've got a lot of other celebs hanging, and you guys come out. It's all Ramsey people on the boat, all celebrating, all saying we lived like no one else now. By God, we're cruising like nobody else. There you go. It's March, 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 March 22nd through the 29th this coming spring. And if you don't want to pay the whole thing up front, you can start, you can save your cabin for only 600 bucks and that'll get you going, but you need to do it because the cabins are going really fast. So get a cabin while you can. RamseySolutions.com slash cruise. Paul's in Buffalo, New York. Hey, Paul, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? Better than I deserve. How can we help? <laughs> so kind of a crazy, uh, life event happened lately um i have a kind of estranged uncle i know him but probably haven't talked to him in 15 20 years and he passed away and my mother his sister is this executive of the estate and she calls me and says he left you about a half a million dollars Whoa. The, you, um, you're the right guy the- i've always <laughs> heard about a guy with a rich uncle, <laughs> a rich uncle. it was you it, it happened it happened <laughs> I always, I never, I didn't know where you were. I've always heard about you, though. Yep. Paul in Buffalo. On, the guy is, <laughs> he's on, Paul man. in Buffalo. He's the guy with the rich uncle. Wow. That's so cool, it's Paul. Ding, ding. That's so cool. Yeah. I hate it when I get a yeah, half a million so, dollars out of the blue. So, little, uh, it's a good problem to have, but I just don't really know what to do. I'm, uh, I've been married for 21 years. Well, not married, but with my wife for 21 years. Um, I'm 37. We have a house and we have two beautiful kids. Um, and I listened to your show for a while and I know it's, it's very centered around getting rid of debt. Um, but I just want to be smart. I've never had this type of like influx of cash flow before. And I just don't want to make any mistakes and, you know, set my kids up and obviously take care of us in the immediate. So yeah, that's very wise because this kind of a hit really could change your family tree if Mm -hmm. you're careful with it. So that's very wise. And um, and so when, how long before you actually receive the money, do you think? Um, I mean, they said it's, well, that's another question too. So a lot of it is in investments and just from things I was reading online, um, I've seen people where like the attorney will liquidate all the investments and then they get taxed really heavily on it. And I don't know, no, like, other things I was reading were like move it to a Ross and then inherit the Roth or something. I don't, no, I don't know. It's, you, Again, can't, it's you, can't, you can't, you can't, you can't move dead people stuff into a Roth. It doesn't work. So. Uh, that's that's okay. it, that's internet um, garbage. Um, so the investments, so six to the investments year, should this, not this have any ta- well, the investments don't have any taxes, honey. So the, okay. d- the the deal is this: now the attorney does if the attorney liquidates them or you liquidate them, it doesn't matter. You now become the owner, even if he liquidates them. Okay, you can ask him okay. not to liquidate them, and you can do it. But here's the here's the tax law on that part, and then we'll move on to the rest of it. Okay, so let's say that um, part of the five hundred thousand is uh, I'll just make up something Home Depot stock. Okay, and Uncle okay. Pa- Uncle paid fifty grand for the Home Depot stock, but the Home Depot stock's worth one hundred and fifty now. Your basis as the inheritance in an inheritance is current market value. And so your tax is based on how much above current market value it is. It's called a stepped up basis. Okay. Okay. You do not get taxed on what he paid for it. You get taxed only on what it's worth at the time of his death. And if you sell it within six months of his death, it is presumed to have been at market value by the, by the IRS. Okay. So you got no taxes. Because okay. so you take all this stuff if you want to just sell, if you want to liquidate all of it and have a half million dollar pile of cash in the middle of the table, zero tax. There's no income tax. There's no inheritance tax. Cool. Now, okay. okay. So that answers that question. <laughs> so we don't have to. We can move on past that. Now, then, the reason I ask how long before you get it is I want you to start pretending like you were hired suddenly to manage someone's half a million dollars and you've never done that before, which is exactly what's happened, right? God just gave you a half a million of his money and God says, how are you going to manage it, son? And you're going, this scares me a little bit. I want to be careful. And that's wise. So what you would do if you were hired by someone and you didn't know what you were doing, you would get some other people on your team that knew what they were doing. And so I want you to begin to gather up your own little personal 
committee, your own little personal board of directors, so to speak. So we're going to get a mutual fund broker, a smart investor pro off our website in your corner. We're going to get a, an estate planning attorney in your corner. We're going to get some tax advice from an ELP and back up and make sure that Dave Ramsey actually gave you the right advice a while ago and check that with a pro. Okay. And it, you can get an Perfect. ELP, a tax ELP off our site. We don't have uh, estate planning attorneys on our site, but we've got people we recommend for tax in Buffalo and for, if you're going to do any real estate deals, you can go get a real estate person in your corner. If you need insurance, you need a good insurance broker in your corner. Every one of these people do not qualify to be in your on your committee unless they have the heart of a teacher meaning th your job is to manage their money their job is to teach you enough about their specialty to help you manage the money got it you don't turn it over to them and go well i just gave it to this guy to manage and he lost it all no your job is to manage it you're taking advice okay. from these other people and therefore their job is to teach you they have to have the heart of a teacher does that make sense it does. And it that does. will keep helpful. you out of trouble. Do not do anything with this money that you do not understand because it is your responsibility. Yeah. Because sometimes these people start talking, and it sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 wah. right? <laughs> you remember yeah. that. And so, yep. long time ago on that cartoon. But yeah, the anyway, so. Uh, all, all that to say, then we're going to have you work the baby steps, right, Jade? Yeah, Paul, what's your current financial situation? Tell us about your financial life be before this money. Yeah, well, that's another like interesting thing. I just had a business of 13 years, and I sold it in January. So I have about $100,000 in assets that I still need to kind of get rid of. Okay. And I have about $20,000 in cryptocurrency. As far as debt goes, I have none, and my wife has none. We wow, don't have debt. We don't have anything. Mortgage? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we own our house. It's we. I think we owe about one hundred and thirty thousand, and it's worth about three hundred. Okay, okay. So, first thing I'd probably do after you have those people in place is I definitely want to pay off my mortgage and just be scot free. And then from there on, I think Dave set you up to have the right folks in your corner to decide what you're going to do about this money, how you're going to invest it, if it's going to be in the stock market, if it's going to be in real estate. And yeah, my recommendation is take six hundred and twenty thousand dollars from Bitcoin and sale of business and inheritance and put it at the top of the page and spend it. We just spent 130 of it paying off the mortgage. What are we going to do with the rest mm -hmm. of it? Okay. I'll give you, and then I'll tell you one last thing on that. Um, a lump sum invested in a good mutual fund or series of mutual funds, if it averages 10% or more, will double every seven years. You're 37, you said? Yep. Me okay. And my wife. So let's pretend we put 400 in investments. When you're 44, you'll have 700. When you're 51, you'll have 1.4. When you're 58, you'll have 2.8. Yep. See how this that's changes your problem. family tree? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, it's such yeah. it's a good problem, but it's yeah. kind of it's intimidating. It's mm -hmm. kind of scary all at once. You're like, and the other two things you can do with money is have fun with it and be generous with it. And you should do some of that with some of this money, too. Definitely. Notice I didn't invest at all. You're debt-free, you're generous, you have some fun, and you invest, and you keep your stinking hands off of it and let it double. This is The Ramsey Show. Thanks for joining us, America. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. John's in St. Louis. Hey, John, how are you? Not too bad by yourself. Better than I deserve. What's up? I'm uh, just calling to try to get a little bit of advice from you, Dave, on uh, ways that my wife and I can tackle our uh, monster debt. 
that we have. Currently, without our house, we are at $240,500. Good um, Lord. Yes. Um, what is, it is a I, monster. What is the monster? Um, unfortunately, it's a lot of credit cards, um, student loans. It's a HELOC and a uh, 401k loan, Oof. as well as two as well as two car payments. You never met a debt you didn't like. Uh, no, and unfortunately not. What's your income? What's the income? Um, our salary wise is one hundred fifty one six. I broke it down to what our yearly is should be roughly uh, ninety nine thousand eight forty. Okay. Uh, okay. So it sounds like you guys. I'm just trying to un- get my head around how this happened. It sounded like you felt like you were making a good income, and it was time to just go crazy. Is that right? Um, the credit cards is the biggest issue. How uh, much is that? Unfortunately, uh, of the credit cards, forty six thousand nine sixty two as of uh, last month. Okay. Um, we got the how much on the cars? Us, uh, the cars itself. My car is twenty eight seven twenty eight thousand seven hundred. Okay. My wife's is twenty one thousand, and mine's due to be paid off in four years. Hers is due to be paid off in three years. Well, one of them's probably got to go. The twenty-eight thousand one. What's it worth? Uh, I was I'm not entirely sure. It's a twenty-one Kia Sorento. Uh, it's more of the family car. She has the more gas efficient car. What does she have? Uh, a Nissan uh, Altima. Well, whatever one well, of these is the least well. upside down and of the most value, I'd probably try to liquidate one and get into a cash car. So, but- John, uh, yeah. I don't really care if it's the family car. You people are broke. You're starving to death making $150,000 a year. You don't get to say it's the family car. You get to say everything's on the table. We're selling so much stuff the kids think they're next. We're not doing anything until we get this mess cleaned up. Because you guys have been spending like you're in Congress for what, 10 How long have you been married? 10 years? Uh, the Four years. Four oh years. Oh, my gosh. Four you guys did this in four years, or did you get started early? Uh, well, I mean, the student loans is all my stuff. That How much is that? Over, but, How much student uh, loans? Unfortunately, 80000 okay. okay. Well, that is the biggest portion, not the credit cards. Um, and then the HELOC. Uh, the, HELOC is uh, how much? The HELOC is where you go? Uh, 46000 Okay. And that was just this past year. Okay. Well, what would you do with that? Which... Uh, unfortunately, it helped us pay off a bunch of credit cards. No, you no, didn't. You, no, you, didn't. Didn't. you moved, you it, moved uh, them. It helped us consolidate them, I should say. Yeah. yeah, you moved them onto your house. And it didn't help you consolidate them. It put your home at risk. Yeah. So it's not a help. And uh, you didn't stop spending. You're still spending more than you make, right? Uh, I would say yes. Yeah. Have you cut up the credit cards? Nope. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Okay. I own myself. Uh, I will use mine primarily for work related, which I know Dave, you I've heard you talk, talk about before. Um, I've expressed in my work they should get us all credit cards so we don't have to use ours. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can get that approved so I can stop using mine when I travel. Uh, apparently, that's not working for you. You have forty six thousand dollars in credit card debt and a HELOC that's forty six thousand, so it's basically ninety thousand dollars in credit card debt. So, something's broken with that system. Would you agree? Uh, yes. You don't end up ninety thousand dollars in credit card debt when when something's working. So, no use of plastic is going to be okay in your house. You guys have to go cold turkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't you don't walk around with a with a flask in your back pocket if you're trying to quit drinking. And so, um, man, how oh, much? Wow. Am, just just curious. For the work part, because I want to know how much of that is an excuse, how much are you putting on your credit card every month for work? Uh, I mean, it's not that much. The one, so. one of the, the card that's got the biggest amount, I take the full blame for it of putting miscellaneous stuff. Um, but that's that had nothing to do with work. Yeah. My Correct. point. My point is, um, if you're spending a little bit here or there for work, and they're reimbursing you, I who care? You don't need a credit card for that. So you shouldn't John, be doing that. But. Um, let, let's, let's reset here for a second. Are you, does this scare you? Uh, yes. Cause it's, uh, I mean, it's continual and I, I would love for 
as a family wise, we would be better off with, you know, financially. And the credit cards I look at as it's one of the scariest things. Okay. Um, Okay, but it, it's kids. scary. It's not the math is not scary. What's scary is the pattern of being out of control and staying out of control. That's what scares me. It's not sustainable. You know this is heading towards the wall, and you're going to T-bone the wall and just blow the whole thing up, right? You know that's what's coming because you, you guys just continue the same pattern. That's you, you know we're in. You can't get out of a hole by digging out the bottom, right? I mean, so um, now how's your wife feeling? Uh, we're both just distressed with it. Okay. Are y'all fighting about this stuff? Uh, we try to talk about it, and she gets stressed and doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, y'all are fighting yeah, about this. I'm just yeah. You know, it would be weird if you're not having a bunch of fights, because this stuff is it, it's the number one cause of divorce in North America. It's the number one cause of disagreement in marriage. This is money problems and money fights, and you got them all up and around your ears. Mm-hmm. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna help you. I want to give you an overarching plan. I've been where you are, except worse, and I remember being terrified, and I remember my wife being terrified, and I remember us trying to kill each other, and I don't want that for you, okay? But the plan I'm going to give you does not have a middle ground. It is not an easy process. The result is 100%. You're going to win, and you're going to become a millionaire. But the path to get there is painful because you guys have a series of behaviors, habits, and even language that you use in your own heads and at each other that has got to completely change because your behaviors, your habits, and the language you use around this stuff, as soon as I start talking about the car, you start talking, it's a family car, as if if it's a non-starter. It's not a non-starter. It's a stupid car and your family's almost bankrupt. It's the enemy. It's not the family car, okay? So you change your vernacular around this, and you go, anything that is between me and freedom is the enemy. We are going to freaking war with our lifestyle and our former patterns of doing things. We are not going to do this anymore. If you're ready to enter into that, I can show you how to do it. If you want to play around and think there's a math trick to hack you out of this, you got the wrong guy. I can't help you. But I can show you. I've shown millions of people how to get out of debt. We'll put you into Financial Peace University. I'll pay for it free, and, and we'll pay for you to be on every dollar of the premium side of the app and get you in the every dollar app, and you and your wife sit down together. Crap, I'm not even going to put a coach in your corner. we got one of our Ramsey coaches in your area. I'm going to pay for a personal coach to coach you, but only if you're willing to say, I'll do whatever I have to do to win. Okay. All right. We can get rid of this fear, man. And here's the weird thing. Before the debt will leave, the fear will be gone. That You'll still have the debt, but you won't have the fear anymore because you'll see your way out. You'll see a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. The only thing you know right now is you're stuck, and you're not stuck. What's stuck is the stupid crap that brought you to here. It's the same stupid crap that made me go broke. And they got Jade 200, what, 200, 400, 460. 460,000 in debt. The lady to my right and paid it off, her and her husband. So you can do this when they weren't making anywhere near a hundred and a half. True so you hang on. This place is about hope, but it's not about false hope. You're going to live like no one else, man. Your friends are going to think you joined a cult. You're going to be going cray cray, man. Completely different than anything you've ever done in your life. But you'll be free in 36 months. Hang on. I'll pay for it. Christian will pick up and get you taken care of, brother. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. 
We appreciate all the help you guys have been giving us and encourage you to continue to give us that help. And the help is you subscribe to the shows. So if you're watching or listening on YouTube or uh, Spotify, Apple, Google Play, whatever, just click the follow or the subscribe button. It makes a big difference in the way those algorithms are handled with those platforms to whether they put the show out or not, how they push it forward to other people to see it. Thank you for doing that. Share the show. Let people know we're here. Click a link and send it to somebody. I sent a funny Instagram to all my buddies this morning. That happens all the time, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can do all that share stuff that makes somebody laugh or makes them think or inspires them. And this show does all of those things. And, of course, leave a nice five-star review. We appreciate all of that. We know you're doing it because our numbers are way up. Tim's in Roanoke. Hi, Tim. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, so my wife and I are about halfway through Baby Step 3, and so we're looking toward investing something that's outside of our uh, my work TSP and her uh, work 401K. Good. And we've – reached out to a financial planner and I'm just one, I don't want to make a, another mistake with money because I've done a lot of them. So I'm just wondering, you know, how much should I be paying this guy as a financial planning fee? And then did you go to a smart investor pro? We did. Okay. We did. Um, the they have a, question the, is, the smart investor pro that particular one has a, as a financial planning fee. Uh, the, yeah, they, they have a, a, they call it a retirement planning fee it's an annual fee and then there's then as i was reading in there depending on what investment vehicle you're using if it's like above fifty thousand, then it's a percentage and then below that it's the brokerage fees okay was the way i was reading it but i don't i don't i don't understand that and we're meeting with the guy tomorrow okay. and i just Mo most of the smart investor pros run on just managed accounts Okay. And managed accounts is simple. Um, there's no commissions, and they charge one percent of the balance. Now, some of them do have a minimum, you know, fifty thousand a balance or whatever, till they get there. And uh, you don't need to pay an annual fee. I don't know what that's for, just for planning, because you're not going to be doing that much planning annually. Now, you may want to pay an upfront fee to help you get your will started if you don't have one help you do some other financial planning things. Uh, how much was that fee? 600. Okay. That's not unreasonable. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Cause I mean, I, a lot of people there in the financial planning world, there are people that do not sell anything. They do not sell insurance. They don't sell uh, mutual funds. They don't sell wills. They don't sell anything. And they just charge for their hours. Mm -hmm. That's called fee based planning. Okay. I don't generally recommend those. Uh, because then you're also going to pay commissions on top of that, and you can get the same advice basically for 600 instead of 4000 uh, or, or for, uh, you know, if you move a couple hundred thousand bucks over there, you're not going to pay anything but 1%, and they're just going to take care of your plan, your annual planning and your other stuff too. There's not that much to this. And so different uh, smart investor pros run different things but as to my knowledge we don't have any fee only all of them are managing mutual funds for your Roth IRA your kids college your rollover from your old job or whatever and they're helping you do that and one percent on the managed accounts is what almost all of them are doing I mean my only question would be at this point in your investing you haven't even begun yet how much financial planning do you need each year True, that, exactly. that would be well, my question we didn't know right yeah. You know, not, not a ton, but six, 600 bucks is not, you know, it's not 6,000. So that's true. You, it, the other thing you can do is this meet with that guy mm -hmm. and just get a sense of the spirit. And, and as you're driving away, ask your wife, do not ask her what she thinks, ask her how she feels about well, that the meeting. Reason, the reason I'm calling is based on how she feels. Okay, what's what's her feeling? Well, they sent us they sent us their disclosure agreement and the contract, and she started reading the contract, and she's like, "Well, wait a minute, now we're getting tied into a contract, and there's all these different fees and whatnot, and getting nickel and dime to death, and I don't want to get involved in that." Okay, go meet with them and see if that spirit changes. We have we've met with them twice already. Oh, okay, okay, then don't do it. Okay, yeah, you're interviewing them. Yeah, click click on Smart Vester Pro and go talk to another one. Okay, there's more than one in your area. 
and right. you know there's probably one just doing a one percent management fee um and so that that really wouldn't be that unusual so yeah mm-hmm. listen do a hundred percent of the time my wife does not feel good about a business relationship i'm entering into we don't do it period period and yeah, i will ask sense. her i'll challenge her are you sure that's god's spirit not last night's pizza <laughs> right i'm gonna double check but she will say no it just, it just doesn't feel right and every time that one wins proverbs 31 who can find a virtuous wife the heart of her husband safely trusts her and he will have no lack of gain huh look at that so yeah don't don't do it i don't care if it's our I, the guy might not be a bad guy sure but he's not your guy and that's it. That's exactly it, Dave. I like that you said it that way because somebody else might call the guy, work with him, and be like, "This guy's great." How many? There's been many times where somebody has recommended somebody to me. They love him, and then I go and I'm like, "This is not my guy." Yeah. So it yeah. happens. Hey, Christian, I do want to learn a little bit more about this guy. I don't think he's doing anything wrong, but I want to learn a little bit about him. So find out who it was. Okay, I'm gonna put him on hold. All right. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Tom is with us in San Diego. Hey, Tom, how are you? Hey, Dave, I'm good. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Wonderful. Glad to hear it. Um, I am out here, and I'm trying to figure out what the right move is to do with my house. I went through FPU uh, at the beginning of the year, and I'm upside down mm. on a car payment. <laughs> like, I, I make good money, but I'm, I'm at a very high in- debt-to-income threshold on my, on my house payment. What do you, what how, how much is your house payment? Forty five hundred. And what do you bring home? Uh, gross is about one forty, one forty five. What are you bringing home a month? Every month, <laughs> just over eleven. Yeah, it's pretty high. Okay. Yeah, it's. And how much is yep. your car payment? Eight sixty. Holy! Well, there is a bigger yep. problem. Yep, and that's so. This is the problem I faced. I'm all about the dump the Tahoe plan, but because I'm too upside down on it. There's no way. What do you owe? I got on? hit really hard. Thirty. What's the number? Thirty. Thirty-nine. Okay, and what do what, what, what do you think it's worth? Well, according to the like KBB estimates, it books at like twenty-four. Private Pri- sale. Private, and 24. so trade would be like twenty. Yeah. What'd you do? Tear it up? No, it's real a, negative equity from the other um, deal in it. Negative. No, okay. I didn't. Um, it was a. It's a high interest. Oh, uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's your interest rate? Twelve. Okay. The forty or the thirty-nine is probably not your payoff. That's probably when you do a subprime loan. They generally put it on the books on TOP, total of all payments. That's different mm-hmm. than an early payoff number. You're asking for, did you okay. ask what your account balance is and you got 39? No, I asked them what their pay of the 10 day payoff and they gave me a 20 day payoff, which I've never heard of, but. Okay. That, that, so that's an actual payoff number. That was an actual payoff wow. number. What car is this? It's a Jeep. Man, you got so screwed. Okay. So oh. the, I'm, I'm really close to a breakthrough on being able to refinance this house and it would cut my payment down significantly. But the trouble is, because I have this, like I'm trying to go back and forth between baby steps one and two. And so I had my step one, I'm crushing step two, and then I got hit with like $20,000 of home repairs in June. And so I just got nothing. So it's starting all over. And so I just keep getting overwhelmed with it and trying to figure out how I should do it. Because if I give up everything, I'll do it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, something's got to go. And you need to decide what it is because nothing you're describing is fun. We got to get rid of the Jeep and maybe the car, maybe the house. You decide, house. but you can get more of both. So I wouldn't hang on to them for dear life. I just say, okay, God, which get me out of this. Jeremy is in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Hi, Jeremy. How hey, are good you? Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on. Sure. How can I help? Uh, so uh, my question is regarding some financial anxiety that I'm going through. Um, I married my amazing wife in 2020, and we've been on fire. We paid off $90,000 in debt, and last summer we just paid off our house. And you're probably thinking, where's the anxiety coming from? And I guess I was expecting like an office space moment where I've got financial freedom and no carries, no worries. And what I'm finding out is when I paid off the house, I went the bank account went from two hundred and thirty thousand down to fifty thousand. And it just had me kind of shook. I'm not sure what steps I should be doing and I'm afraid to even move at this point. I'm just so your anxiety is because you have less money in your account? Correct. I'm afraid to be I'm afraid to be wrong. Like I know where we came from with the ninety thousand dollars in debt. And I'm afraid I, I don't know what to do with it, like where to move. I know baby ninety thousand included well. paying off your mortgage, or that on top your mortgage on top of that. Oh, on top of that, ninety thousand was uh, just uh, regular debt, okay. and then, then how the much was the mortgage? Was 180. How much? The mortgage of one hundred and eighty-five thousand. Okay, so two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars has been paid off since the COVID quarantine, and you got married. Correct. And you didn't die. Correct. A lot of stress. What do you do for a living? I'm a federal contractor. Yeah, God kind of, almighty. Kind of feels like you've been running with your hair on fire for three years, and you finally just don't have anything to be on fire about, and it scared you. Uh, that, that's probably correct, yes. So here's a weird thing. I wish it wasn't the case, man, but here's our, our bodies solve for the nerd word is homeostasis. It likes the way things have always been. And that's why when somebody knocks off 50 or 60 or 70 pounds, if they haven't made an entire environment change, changed their life, changed their identity, I am now somebody who does X, Y, or Z, their body will scratch and claw that 50, 60, 70 pounds back on because that's what it knows. And your body knows fight or flight, run, war. It's all coming down. It has never practiced peace. Peace. And so, dude, you're not crazy. You're not nuts. Your anxiety alarms are ringing off the hook as they should be because you are in uncharted water. You just don't know what to do when when you're not when the water's not dumping over the side of the boat when it's just calm and chill. And it's just it's going to be a season you're going to have to practice and you have to learn how to be still, not create chaos because there's none being created for you, right? Right. And it sounds like uh, I know what I'm talking about because this is the pot talking to the kettle. It's good to meet you, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You do think about, I wasn't kidding around, what all you did in the beginning of a pandemic and out the back end of a quarantine and a pandemic when uh, when we were all an unprecedented, oh God, I hate that word, um, now, uh, uh, stress levels. And in the middle of that, you went ahead and got married, so let's add some stress, in the middle of that, you went ahead and paid off $275,000 and completely revolutionized your life, which means you turned up the burners to the highest possible heat um, while you were in all of these other burners and the water was already boiling. And all of a sudden, it all just went off and got quiet. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think I'm just looking to find out what I should be doing now. I guess I, guess I know it's investing. But we both have... <sighs> Roth IRA, breathe. she has a pension, so I'm just, I'm not sure what to you, do now. You, you don't know what to do. Just breathe. Chill. That's and, it. And start investing and being outrageously generous. You're 100% debt-free. Make snow angels in your front yard. What's your what's your household income? Um, 150 before tax. With no payments. Right. Take your shoes off and go walk around the backyard. That grass is yours. Shh. Now, all that crap you used to pay payments on, let's take those payments and put them in investments. Fill up your 401k, fill up your Roth, fill up your envelope that says random acts of generosity and catch the single mom pumping gas with the kids with the frayed clothes and her tires are bald as a baby's butt. Roll the car over to the car tire place next door and put four tires on her car and fill it up and have the oil changed and pay cash for it and smile and walk away and she'll never know who did it because you're God's angel that day because you now have money. How's that sound? Sounds great. Yeah. Here's a, a common thing that happens. 
is we think and, and again like getting out of debt is a is a core tenet of not being anxious but we often forget that wherever we end up we go with us and so if you thought there was going to be some magic wand that suddenly you were going to like yourself or suddenly you were going to not have any more shame from when you were a kid or suddenly your dad was going to call you and tell you how proud he was and that call ain't coming being debt free will set you free from anybody any external chains that got you but it may be now you can do the work that you need to do to heal right the stuff you've been crap you've been carrying around for a long long time yeah that's that's possible it gets really quiet then the voices kick up exactly it, it's it's like a you've experienced this i have and i've just met with countless couples who's the last kid moves out and that house gets quiet mm-hmm. and now we got to learn how to have a new kind of life because it's different now you know, we planned so intentionally that the party just began when they left. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, he's gone finally. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody, Daniel, is he really like, gone? Is your mom carrying a disco ball into the house? Is he really yep. gone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, but I, hey, let's let's like just full disclosure. You and I, I've, I've asked you off air as my life has transitioned since I've I've taken this job. Like I, I, there's a, there's a, dis, there's a discomfort with the newness of not running for my life anymore and not feeling like the whole world's coming down yeah. being able to love my wife and not being panicked in the middle of the night when she's asleep. It's six o'clock. Go home. We don't work at seven. It's, yeah. Go home here. You know, yeah. that, that's there. There's, it's an intentional act, but the thing is, it's just, it's like if you're driving down the road at a hundred miles an hour and then you slow down to 55, it seems like you're crawling. <laughs> 